Child, are you there? Yeah, Grandpa. Child, I've just heard the voice of the Lord. That's all me white folks singing in church, Grandpa. No, not the singing, child. Maybe you were just thinking. No, the noise our folks make in our head can never be mistaken for the voice of the Lord. The Lord's voice is not like anything else in the world. What did he say? He told me to go to the big house and speak to Mr. Broderick. Speak to Mr. Broderick? He says, I'll know what to say when I get there. But it's Sunday, Grandpa. Mm, I must go when the spirit moves me. You must take me there. It's forbidden. Mr. Broderick, he says, I've got a right to go to the big house. Come, you will lead me there. I really don't know how you managed to appear so suddenly in places where no one expects to see you. Well, did you expect to see me in the avenue? No. Why do you say that? Oh, I might have been in the avenue. Allow me to tell you that it wouldn't matter to me whether you were in the avenue or anywhere else. I wanted to see if my cousin was returning from church. Well, you don't know her very well if you think her capable of leaving before the end of the service. She fears God and dreads her father, like a true daughter of the South. Nevertheless, I was looking for her. She wanted to speak to me about the supper party at night. Apart from you and me, everyone shut up this afternoon in that wooden shack they call a church. We are completely alone in the house. Why do you say that? Well, isn't it so? No, there are the colored people. Oh, colored people don't come. Colored people are just there, like the furniture. I don't agree with you. And I'm surprised to hear you say such things. I come from the north, but you too come from somewhere else. America's full of people who come from somewhere else. Just the same, they end by having a family likeness. But in your case, even after 12 years here, you remain a stranger, in spite of your uniform. Why did you say we were alone in the house? To give you the opportunity of talking to me. What would I want to talk to you about? You know that as well as I do. Is that why you were waiting here when I came out? I wasn't waiting, I was here. You're mistaken if you think I have something confidential to tell you. I can wait. On my word, you're impertinent. Yes, miss. How long are you staying this time? Until Friday. Unless war breaks out. You believe there's going to be a war? Well, since everyone says there's going to be a war, we shall end by having one. What is never mentioned never happens. Will you remain loyal to the government? That's a question I shall answer for myself when the time comes. It's foolish of me to ask. After all, to whom would you be loyal? You have no roots here, neither north nor south. Why do you remain here? Your sympathies are with the north, so you're already in the enemy's lair. What can I do? I'm only the poor relation. A little northern chit whom no one notices and isn't even very pretty. I would never have come here if my parents been living. I loathe the plantation. I spent a winter on it, a snowless winter, and I longed to see the snow. But I cannot leave. Well, it seems to me that if you stay here, you will have to obey the laws of the South, talk the language of the South. Never. Well, Mr. Broderick and his sister will find means to make you hell as no furious like civilians in wartime. In less than six weeks, you'll be a good little slave driver. If I were a man, you wouldn't dare to insult me so. Talk to 
the snow a little while ago. Yes, I suppose you found that childish. No, not at all. I too long to see the snow. Sometimes I imagine if I open the shutters of my room upstairs, I can see the snow sparkling white on the meadow, as it was in Poland. And I'd shiver and laugh for joy, like a small boy running about and shouting because he can sniff that wonderful ice cold air. Angelina told me they killed your father, is that true? Yes, they hanged him in the public square, of course. Why? What had he done? It was during the uprising against the Prussians in 48. How did you get away? On that same night, my grandfather woke me and we ran away. Didn't the Prussians do anything to you? No, nothing. Well, they gave me a whipping after the execution. As an example, they said. You were whipped? You call that nothing? Well, that was 12 years ago. The pain has lessened considerably. Do you know why I'm alone with you here in this house? Because my uncle judged it of no importance whether I went to church or not. It's always an effort for them to remember we're of the same blood. Well, you could leave if you wanted to. How can I? I have no money and nowhere to go. Oh, well, Mr. Broderick would help you. He said he'd undertake to send you to Boston within three days. So you've talked to him about me? Yes. What does it matter to you whether I go or whether I stay? It doesn't. I merely wish to prove to you that if you wish to stay, it is because you want to. For the last three days, I've been watching for this opportunity to speak my mind to you. I don't like you, Lieutenant Pachevsky. You see, you did have something to say to me. I don't like your insolence, your smiles, your European eyes. Ever since you came here on leave, I've been watching you. If my uncle knew the sort of man you are, he would never have treated you as his son. Why do you turn your eyes away when you speak to me? I'm not turning you away. I have none of the wiles of the southern women to whom you pay hypocritical compliments. Why do you waste precious time in refusing to tell me what is so close to your heart? Close to my heart? I'll tell you what's close to my heart, since you insist on knowing it. I intend to stay here, on and on and on, do you hear? And why are you staying, Miss Revere? I have my reasons. You have only one good one, and that's the one you'll never admit. Pride is stifling you. How dare you? They're coming back from church, and you're so close to me that anyone would think, well, anything they chose. You are imprudent, Miss Regina. I don't see why you're so anxious, Edmund. After all, Dr. Locke says there's going to be no war. Well, my dear sister, Dr. Locke is a godly man, but he knows nothing about worldly matters. Well, the news is no worse than it was yesterday. Well, it's worse to the extent that no one knows the true situation any longer. I do hope the conversation that suffered not will not dwell on the chances of war. Miss Prelo and her daughter revel in the idea. Well, I'll, I'll warn Eric McClure when he arrives. Oh, I feel so weary this afternoon. Whew, probably the first hot day. I shall go sit down quietly until it's time to dress. Mm -hmm. Mr. White says I have to ask you if I can go riding tomorrow. Well, where do you want to go, Jimmy? He says he wants to go to Trubotley with Lieutenant Pichet. Oh. Uh, we'll, we'll see about that later, Jimmy. Jeremy, will you come with me? I'll select the wine for tonight. Yes, Mr. Broderick. You can ask your father again later. I'm sure he'll let me. Can I go down to the stables and polish my saddle? Yes, yes, you may. Do you not miss going to church on Sunday? Uh, no, no, there's no Catholic church in the neighborhood. Oh, yes, I always forget. North, South, Catholic, Protestant, white, colored. Life is a constant battle. <laughs> yes. Tell me, uh, what do you think of our niece? Miss Regina? Hmm. What do I think of her? Yes, do you think she's pretty? Well, she has fine eyes. Her hair is very beautiful. Yeah. What about the rest of her? The rest? <laughs> I see. The rest is science. Would you mind rocking my chair? Certainly. Yes, I'd like to marry off the child. Do you think a man could fall in love with her? I think every woman has a right to hope. <laughs> That's rather a pessimistic view. <laughs> <laughs> However, I have high hopes that a suitable match can be found. Do you have someone in mind? Naturally. This very evening, Lieutenant, you may witness the flower of romance. What, someone who's visiting us? Exactly, young McClure. He and his father were here once before this winter. Were you not here? 
Uh, no, ma'am. I was. Oh, oh, I, oh, oh, that must do bad. I'm so sorry. I was at Fort Sumter. <laughs> oh, there. That That's better? better, yes. Much better. <sighs> yes, um. Uh, they come on business to sell the uh, plantation. Unfortunately, it's badly situated, so my brother refused. I'm afraid that he's going to be back today on the same errand. But if Mr. Broderick has already refused him? <laughs> you don't understand, because you're a foreigner. <laughs> oh, please don't be offended, after all. One of the reasons you're so attractive to women is the fact you are a foreigner. <laughs> now, 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 don't you deny it. Why, a young Polish nobleman, you carry them away with you to the Poland of Monsieur Chopin. And they feel themselves very, very unhappy, very interesting, and they revel in their agony. <laughs> Oh, I brought my phone. Um, now, what were we talking about? Uh, you were uh, talking about Eric McClure. Does he write well? Does he write well? What a strange question. <laughs> well, he comes from a good family. His ancestors were Scotch and cattle thieves, which is quite a distinction in this part of the country. Has Regina met him? No, she was in Florida when he was here last time. We'll settle a handsome sum on the child and give him our plantation at Tomotley. You already see them married? Mm, I'll set my heart on it. Oh, good afternoon, Lieutenant. Well, where did you get to after church, Angelina? Oh, outside a while under the trees in the avenue. Where's Regina? Uh, I think she's on the porch. Oh, oh, go first find your father, child. Tell him I wish to speak to him. Yes, my husband. Yes, Angelina, what is it? Aunt Evelyn wants to talk to you. Well, you tell her I'll be there by and by. Then you better start dressing for tonight. Yes, Papa. You sure you don't mistake your own thoughts for the voice of the Lord? No, his voice doesn't make the same sound, and you can always recognize it. Why are you telling me all this, Uncle John? Something's going to happen to this house. What do you mean, on account of all this talk about the war? I don't know, but God is going to pass in our midst. Right here in this house, God is going to pass among us. What do you mean? The wrath of God will be fulfilled. But, but why should he punish me? What have I done? Didn't I free you 20 years ago? Am I not freeing my slaves little by little? He won't punish you if you ain't done nothing, my Edward. God is love. But if God is love, why, why does he take revenge even on the wicked? No doubt because the wicked stir the wrath of love. But how? Through lack of love. He can sing hymns and shout hallelujah. But if you don't love your neighbor as yourself, and even more than yourself, you are lost. Oh, that, that, that's enough, Uncle John. Eat, eat me for some day. I have one more thing to say to you, Master Edward, before you call my grandson to take me home. Yes, what is it? As I came through the stables just now, your son Jimmy says he's going to ride to Tomotley tomorrow. So? With the foreign lieutenant. Well, he may, yes. Don't let him go. Well, why not? Have you ever heard anyone speak against Lieutenant Vichesky? No, but once I happened to be in the Great Avenue, and I heard him talking to Miss Regina. <laughs> well, there's nothing extraordinary in that. I don't know what he said, but I listened to the sound of his voice, and he wasn't speaking the way men speak to women. What do you mean? For us blind folk, the voice means almost everything, and he didn't speak like a man speaking to a woman. He has a cruel voice, Master Edward. Uh, I'm afraid you imagine things, Uncle John. Charles, you may take your grandfather home. Grandpa, can I reach out and finger and touch clock and table? No. You mustn't touch a single thing in a white man's house. Uncle John. 
In the cotton field, they say there's going to be a war. But Missy says she's sure there won't be. Maybe the Lord is going to make an example. What example? A miracle for the black people? You yeah, know, daughter Uncle John trying to frighten us. Grandpa, there's a lot of food here. White folks must eat well, child. Why? Just because it's so. Because God gave them white skins. Why did he give me a white skin too? The Lord will give you far more than that in heaven, my little lamb. Come. So, uh, if the conflict does break out between North and South, your sympathies would be with the North? Yes, with the North. Here you talk one to think the South was already invaded. Regina, you've been living here for a year now. Are you not happy? Happy? No. But why? Simply because I don't like the South. Well, then I, I think it's my duty to help you return to the North. Is that what you want? Yes. I think you look a little foolish, Mr. Dream, if the war does not take place. The war won't be the cause of my leaving, Lieutenant Pachewski. Didn't you tell me less than an hour ago that you'd stay? I've changed my mind. In any way, less than an hour ago, I seem to remember that you advised me to leave. But then I was deciding to put your decision to the proof, since you decided to stay on and on and on and on. Mrs. Well, what am I to believe? Believe what I'm telling you now, Uncle Edward. I want to go. I want to leave this house in the South forever. Regina! Jimmy, what have you been up to? Nothing, Father. Mr. Broderick, Jimmy has something to tell you. Oh, well, a little later, I think, Mr. White. I, I, I'm greatly disturbed this afternoon. Yes, I know, but you still see Miss Regina married to your Mr. McClure. You will see, young man. She'll marry him yet. But if she leaves? She won't leave when she's seen Eric McClure. Did she change her mind, Edward? No. No, no, no. She, she, she wouldn't listen to me. Our nerves are set on edge by this heat. Lord, I'd be, I'd be glad to be three months older. Then we'd know whether there was going to be war or not. Young, what are your views on these burning issues? Were we soldiers are less attracted by politics and civilians. We wait for war to emerge from speeches. And our job is to defeat the enemy. I hate to hear you talk so in such a cold and gentle voice. But we must keep a cool head in times like these. I don't see how you manage to stay so calm. Well, that is part of my profession. I know, but I'm not a soldier, and I find it very hard to control myself and wait. To wait is always horrible. I declare, but Regina has upset you. I, I, I don't deny. But I'm glad you're here. Your presence is a comfort to us all. I'm going because there's someone here who hates me. Who? Not my father. No. Well, then who is it? Lieutenant Pachewski. He hates him? Well, what an extraordinary idea. He's so polite and agreeable. You don't know him. His very smile turns me twice. I never see him bow to me without feeling that in his heart he despises me. I'm unable to understand the influence he has over your father. Influence? Why, that seems a good deal. Well, then the affection your father has for him. He looks upon him as a son. But he has a son, Jimmy, and he has you. Then it must be gratitude. For what? Oh, something to do with the old count, the lieutenant's grandfather. I think he managed to get a good deal of money out of Pona and lent Papa some of it when we were in difficulties. So now the lieutenant's made to feel this is his home. That doesn't explain why everyone should lose their heads over him. Yes. Everybody adores him. You adore him too? Oh, don't be silly. That's just a way of speaking. But he's agreeable. Though I like men to be more... Oh, what am I trying to say? Anyway, he's not like other men. You've noticed that? Of course. I can't think what it is. And it's because of him you're leaving. Yes. You hate him to that extent? Yes. At the rate, I hate the harm you can do. Why, that's incredible. He'd never hurt anyone. That you don't know. Now you'll stay here, Jimmy, till I've found your father. You must tell him yourself what has happened. Do you hear? Yes. And don't you budge until your father comes. What shall I do in the meantime? You can think of your sins, my boy.
<laughs> What's the matter, Jimmy? I've done something silly. Just now I told Sam to polish my saddle, and he said he'd other things to do. So I slapped his face so hard that he almost fell down. Mr. White wants me to tell Papa about it myself. To confess, if you like. I see. If you said a few words to him, to Papa, you could smooth things over. Lieutenant? Yes? This note has just been delivered by a horseman. No, there's no answer. My leave has been curtailed. Ah, then the situation is worse. No, not necessarily. But it means I must leave Bonaventure at dawn. Must you? Must you, Jan? And an order is an order. Jan, if, if war should come, have you decided which side you'll fight on? Well, let's wait and see if war does come. I'm afraid you won't be given much time to wait. The government has decided to send provisions to Fort Sumter instead of withdrawing its troops as General Beauregard demanded. Yes, I know. All the same, I must return to Fort Sumter. Yeah. Stay in our camp. Stay with us. I'll let you know. In due time. Excuse me, Mr. Broderick. Did your son speak with you yet? Uh, no, no, no. I was on my yeah. way when... <clears throat> well, Jimmy, what have you to say? I refuse to speak. Then I will. I'd rather Lieutenant Pashevsky. Um, Jimmy slapped a disobedient Negro. You dared raise a hand against a Negro? I told him to polish my saddle and he refused. He said he'd do it later. Don't you know I've forbidden anyone to strike a Negro or even to reprove him without my permission? Here we are within an ace of war for which our slaves are the alleged excuse and you choose this moment to strike one. It's pride, pride. Your mother's pride that speaks in you. But I'll break that pride, Jimmy. I'll bring you to your knees, I'll... Jan, take him to the house behind the silo and punish him as you think fit. Isn't it his tutor's place to punish him, Edward? I've never raised a finger against the child, and I won't do it now. That's just the trouble. No one has ever dared raise a finger against him. That's just what he likes. Jan, for the second time, I ask you to take him and thrash him in such a way that his house can be heard even in the Negro's cabins. I want him to know. Leave me alone, Regina. Take him away, Jan. Uncle Edward, listen to me. I don't want to listen to anyone. That man must not touch your son. You don't know what you're talking about. If you knew what sort of a man he was, you'd, you'd turn him out of this house. Regina, what's the matter with you? You don't understand. At this very moment, the foreign lieutenant that your father has been weak enough to treat as his son is, is beating Jimmy like a plant beats a slave. But if it was disobedient... But none of you seem to know what you're doing. The man is a monster and all of you are blind. But he's get into such a state because a naughty boy gets a cave in. Angelina, I beg you, I beseech you, run to the silo and stop that man touching your brother. I certainly won't. You're ridiculous. There's certain things about Lieutenant Bichaska that I can't tell you. I seem to feel in my flesh every one of the blows given to Jimmy. That man's brutality is horrible. Can't you see he's a fiend? Regina, you frighten me. All right, I'll go. Listen, Angelina. I love Lieutenant Pachowski to destruction. That's why I wanted to run away. I love that man. And at the same time, something in me hates him. He's taken all peace, all joy of living from me. He's waiting for my lips to tell him that I love him, so as to turn me into a slave. But I won't say a word, because all he has for me is contempt. Oh, but perhaps he loves you, Regina. He loves no one.
Allow me to introduce myself. I'm Eric McClure. Excuse me. I didn't expect... Lieutenant Vyshevsky. Ah, yes. Mr. Broderick talked about you a great deal when I was visiting here before. May I ask why you're looking at me so closely? Excuse me. It seems to me that I saw you last year at a, at a ball given at, at Beaufort by the officers of the 50th Light Cavalry. A, a few civilians had been asked. Oh, you must be mistaking me for someone else. I don't dance. It, the resemblance is extraordinary. As far as I'm concerned, I'm sure I've never seen you before. In spite of that, I feel I know you a little. You've been mentioned from time to time by various members of the family, and in the most flattering terms. I'm going to tell Mr. Broderick that you have arrived. Thank you. Excuse me. I believe Mr. Broderick's asked you to spend a few days on the plantation. Yes, but unfortunately I have to return tonight. Yes, unfortunately I too have to leave at dawn. politics. I wasn't listening because politics bore me. And he left his seat and came and stood by me. He said something I didn't understand. I saw his lips move. But it seemed to me I'd grown deaf. He came so close his hand touched mine a little above the wrist. Perhaps he expected me to say something in return, but I couldn't. Why? I don't know why. He stood motionless for a few seconds, then smiled and went back to his seat. His behavior was as strange as yours. But it all happened in a minute. The next day, I was walking on the outskirts of the plantation when a colored child ran up and gave me a letter. Oh, if I didn't tell someone this, I think I'd die. I waited till I was alone in my room to read the letter. It was a love letter. Well, why didn't you say something? Well, go on, finish your story. I took the letter and rubbed it all over my breast and my arms. You can't imagine how much I enjoyed doing it. So you're in love, Angelina? In love? In love with young McClure? But that's not it at all. It's simply that I'd asked for a sign and the sign was given me. I want to be loved, don't you understand? Now don't tell me God loves me as I were a child of six. I want to be loved by men. Angelina, you're a wicked girl. Oh, now you're going to talk about my soul. And when people talk to me about my soul, I get the impression I'm stark naked. What did you do with the letter? I ate it. You ate it? Oh, what's so extraordinary about that? St. John the Apostle ate a book. It's far easy to eat a letter. You just swallow one piece after another, quietly as you please. But first, I rub my body all over with it. What was it? Your lieutenant. He's heard every word. You tell Papa. No, he won't. But that will be admitting the eavesdrop. Oh, well, never mind. Oh, I wish I had to let me get my hair the way I want. Virginia must hurry and get dressed. There's only a quarter of an hour till supper. I don't want to see Lieutenant Pachowski. Well, you won't be seated next to him. If I were you, I wouldn't say a single word to him. I'd treat him with the supreme contempt a woman should have for any man. And then you see a little Polish lieutenant come falling into you like a dog. Angelina, hold your tongue. You don't know what you're saying. As for me, I don't wish to be left alone one minute with young Clue. He's quite capable of making love to me again. Oh, this evening's going to be such fun. Perhaps he's down there now talking to Papa about me. But the North hasn't the least desire to fight. To tell the truth, I don't fear the North so much as I do the South, and in particular, General Beauregard. Oh, no, there you're mistaken. General Beauregard has the correct view of the situation. He won't strike the first blow unless a slur is cast on the South. Anyway, uh, nothing's going to happen without God's permission. Yes, but it's God's permission I find so terrifying. He sends his gospels through such torrents of blood. And forgive me, my ideas on the subject was only shocking. Yes. 
I, I myself have a favor to ask of you. I didn't come here to ask a favor of you. Excuse me, I, I, th I thought you wished to speak to me about your plantation. Oh, no, no, I sold it last week. Ah, uh, was the transaction satisfactory? Well, it's impossible to run a plantation without slaves. God didn't wish us to have slaves. Then there is something else you wish to speak to me about? Yes, but perhaps it can wait till later in the evening. Of course, of course. Uh, by the way, you did meet Lieutenant Pachevsky, didn't you? Yes. What was your impression of him? Well, that's difficult for me to answer. I, I only saw him for a minute or two. Although he seemed courteous, he seemed almost too much so, I thought. At the same time, he seemed to be uh, disturbed. No other impression? Not at the moment. I'm prepared to believe all the good in the world about him. Why do you ask? Well, I suddenly had the idea that you probably could help me. How? Oh. Well, I'm convinced in this high he's for the South, but loyalty to the North keeps him in that uniform. He must report back before Sumter at dawn tomorrow. But if he does go and war breaks out, he'll never come back again. I don't believe he'll ever fight for the North. Then what is he doing here in that uniform? Well, he's doing what a lot of young Americans are doing at this moment. He's examining his conscience. Ah, other guests are arriving. Have you seen Angelina? No. Lieutenant Pachowski, I have something to say to you. I want to speak to Angelina. Listen to me for a moment. What did you to say to me? A while ago, when we were downstairs and alone in the house, you told me to speak to you. A while ago is not now. You told me I had something to say to you. Do you know what it is? Naturally. Why naturally? Because it was enough to look at you then as it is to look at you now. Oh, I could die of shame right now before you. Send Angelina to me. What right of you to speak to me like that? You're trembling, Regina. I have every right. I no longer need to hear what you are going to tell me. Why are you so anxious to find her? Because I'm not the same person as I was then. Something has happened. All right! Tell me! Say it! Humble your pride if that's what you're pining for! Let me go, I hate you! Don't you think I know that too? between the trees, between the tall cypresses that grow in the black water. Oh, I feel so romantic. Bright red ears, lily white hands, like a lady of quality. <laughs> That's the talk of this supper party I ever did see. Them dishes over there. If Miss Strong cut you doing nothing, she'll pull your hair for you. Let me tell you, nigger, that nobody's ever pulled my hair on this plantation, so put them dishes over there. Yes, Miss Liza. What are those folks the quality talking about? The war, Miss Liza, nothing but the war. Everything's gonna stay just as it is, do you hear me? Yeah, but I'm scared. There are too many black folks talking about running away. Mr. Broderick, he doesn't know, but I think if I hear a cannon shot, I'd drop dead. You won't run away. No, I didn't say that. It's too difficult. But I'm scared to death, and I'm awfully brave. I've been suspecting that myself a little while. What you scared of, nigger? If there's a war, you won't have to fight. Well, is that so? When all it's said and done with, it's the black man that always have to foot the bed. Go back in there and talk such nonsense. You can talk white for all you work, Miss Liza, but you is black. And when you die, you is going to be buried along with the rest of us. Get! Bury me with the black folks while my hair's just got a little, little wave in it. That crazy old jammy. Well, if you want my opinion, I think we're all showing very little spirit. I mean, very little indeed. You know, I've no wish to offend anyone. But we all look as though we lost our last friends. Would you have us dancing when war might break out at any moment? Well, we'll not break out. Those people up in Washington would be thunderstruck if a single shot was fired. Nevertheless, there must be someone among us in the South who can make them shut up. Oh, there are people, my dear. Why, three days ago I went to a ball that lasted into the small hours. The flower of southern youth gathered in the great gilt drawing room. A toast was drunk to General Beauregard and to all the states that have already seceded from the Union. From Texas, whose flag bears a single star, 
Elizabeth, I'm going to give her second jewel. I hate to contradict you, ma'am, but Virginia hasn't made up her mind yet to secede from the Union. And it's an open secret that General Lee would be put in command of the Northern armies by President Lincoln. Young man, those are the idle dreams of the abolitionists. Virginia is all for us. And the real smiles of that old chimpanzee in the White House won't change a thing. I don't suppose you're opposed to slavery. With all my heart, ma'am. Mr. McClure has freed all his slaves. What, all your slaves, Mr. McClure? Every one. Remember that when you return up north, Virginia. You hear us slander. The ideas I have there of a southern planter is fantastic. <laughs> As for myself, I've never parted a slave from his wife or mother from her children. You're altogether too kind-hearted. Of course he is. I have 200 slaves. I keep them in order. And I'd like to see the devil himself try to get them away from me. With all due respect, ma'am, I must tell you that if the South fights, it won't be to keep us slaves. General Lee has just freed all here. General Lee has? I freed 28 last Christmas. 25 returned because they didn't know where else to go. That shows that you're merciful within the limits imposed by Southern customs, but the three slaves who didn't return bear witness against you. What a way to talk to your uncle. My, sympath my sympathies are with them. I refuse to believe that anyone on earth has the right to own a single slave. And what do you think of that, Lieutenant? I'm, I'm so sorry. I wasn't listening. I beg your pardon. I hope our soldiers have pretty uniforms. Those that are worn now are so severe. War is not a fancy dress ball, Miss Prevo. No, but a flashing uniform built, Mariah. And I wonder what our flag will be like. Well, several designs have been submitted so far, I understand. The most popular one seems to be a red ground with the cross of St. Andrew in blue, spangled with white stars. Oh, I can see it already waving over the battlefield. You're in an awful hurry, Miss Prelo. Have you any idea what a battlefield is like? Why, of course I have. Papa's library at home is full of pictures showing the chief episodes of the war against England. Not a detail missing. You can see the gunners at their posts very clearly indeed, and the cannons belching fire. And maybe some dead and wounded too? Oh, why, right here and there, of course. There have to be some. There'll be a lot if war does break out. And what'll you do then, Miss Prelo? Why, I'll shred lint, sir, to make dressings for our wounded. Shouldn't you say our gallant wounded? That's what they're called in every war. Oh, why can't we talk of something else? Oh, oh, no. Why, the earth's been said to upset her. If you'd like me to, I'll see what it is. Yes, yes, yes. <coughs> Of course you are. Excuse me. Jimmy, shouldn't you be upstairs in bed? Aren't you coming up to tell me a story? I don't know, Jimmy. I don't know tonight, perhaps. Well, I could creep down when everyone is gone and we can meet on the porch. It's all right, Jimmy. We'll see. What's the matter, I don't want to hear what they have to say, that's all. Do they frighten you? Oh, don't be ridiculous. I'm not afraid of anything. It's just simply that they bore me. Yes, you must take Miss Prelow's talk with a grain of salt. I don't care, thank you, Miss Prelow. First of all, I'm sure that nothing's going to happen. Ever since I was a child, I've heard nothing talk about impending calamities. And nothing happens, as you may have noticed. Nothing's happened since I was born. I'm supposing there was a calamity. The real calamity. Oh, you best go back to the line. I don't care if there's a conversation. But I have something important to say to you. To me? Yes, certainly to you. But first, I want you to allow me to ask you a question. It's, it's a very delicate one, and I hesitate. I wonder what it can be. Well, it means by confessing something to you, which will certainly displease you very much. Oh, well, now that you've warned me. Do you promise you'll forgive me? Why, oh, uh, yes. You sure? But tell me, Jessica, you're too tiresome for words. Before dinner, I, when I went upstairs, I passed by Miss Regina's room. Yes, well... In spite of me, I couldn't help hearing part of what you said. I was certain of it. Lieutenant Bichewski, I hate you. You promised to forgive me. I do forgive you, but I hate you. Listening at doors like a slave. I wasn't listening. I couldn't help hearing. You were talking about Eric McClure. That's none of your business. I didn't listen out of sheer curiosity. I had other reasons. Oh, but one should be enough for you. I won't have that man right in you, not that as you hear. Are you mad? How dare you speak to me in such a tone? Angelina, I'm sorry. I, I gave way to a moment of impatience. Is it true that Eric McClure wrote you a love letter? Wasn't it perhaps one of those daydreams we all have? Miss Regina seemed to think so. I think you're impertinent and ridiculous. I think you judge me less harshly if you knew how deeply I'm suffering. 
Angelina, are you in love with Eric McClure? If I were, why should it affect you? It goes straight to my heart. Because I love you. What's the good of lying? You know very well you don't love me. Is there any doubt that the Lord is on our side? Well, that's not such an easy question. We'd have to know, first of all, if God is always on the winning side, since you think we're going to win. Well, if God is with us, I really don't see how the North can win. Why, it'll be almost blasphemy. Uh, what was the matter with Angelina Young? I, I, I think she's too young to be interested in politics or war. And she's quite right. For the remainder of the evening, we shall speak of more pleasant things. Well, I suppose it's a good thing to be so sure of victory. I'm reminded of a passage from the Book of Kings. Let not him that girdeth on his harness boast himself as he that putteth it off. Oh, I wish this night would end. There's something about the uncertainty we're in I, I, I just can't stand. It'd almost be a relief to hear the guns. Maybe we'll never hear them. Was Miss Angelina much upset? I, I think she's too young to be much upset. I think you're mistaken, sir. She is no longer a child and no doubt possesses emotions like the rest of us. Where did she go, Jan? Onto the porch. Perhaps you would permit me to join her, sir. I assure you that she's not in the least upset. Well, yes, 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 of course you may, Eric. I promise to keep out the subject of war. You hear the pillows talk, you think they wanted war. Well, women are more bloodthirsty than men. I'd give my right arm to prevent it. Well, there's still a chance that you may not have to. You were always more optimistic than I. No, I'm not optimistic. On the contrary, I feel there's a shadow hanging over us. Yes, I, I, I felt it for three weeks. And I for the last hour. Last hour? Have you heard any news? No, this has nothing to do with the war. I don't know how to explain what I want to say. But I'd like to tell someone to get rid of it. As you rid yourself of a dream by telling it. And I can't hope for anyone to understand. E everything has, has changed for me in the last hour. Yes, I, I felt something was wrong. You seem so disturbed ever, ever since young Eric McClure arrived. Yes, there is a, a kind of a coincidence from the first moment I saw him and this strange feeling. What did you talk about? Uh, talk about? You were alone with him for a moment, weren't you? Alone with McClure? Yes. And that he gave you his views of the situation. Well, well, to tell you the truth, I don't remember what we talked about. It was of no importance. Do you still intend leaving at dawn tomorrow? Those are my orders. You can be sure of it tonight. Many orders of that sort will be torn up and cast to the winds. It wouldn't be dishonorable to disobey, Jan. If you have any doubts on the subject, we could ask young McClure his opinion. No. Forgive me for saying this, but I have no wish to see that man. I tell you, I don't understand you. In any case, you'll be obliged to see him again in a few moments. I'm sorry, I explained myself very badly. I meant... I meant that I don't want to see him alone. Why? Please allow me to keep my reasons to myself. In any case... I shall be leaving Bonaventure at dawn. Please heaven that that man's path never crosses mine again on this earth. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I don't want to ask questions, but 
and I'm twice your age, and I've lived. Yeah, I mean, I've been unhappy. It's not impossible that I might understand and, and help you. Hmm. What, what do you want to know? Why don't you want to find yourself face to face with this man? Because he has taken the place I wish to hold dear in the heart of someone who lives in this house. Eric McClure? Yes, but he's only spent a few hours in this house. Don't you think that's time enough? No, 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 I confess I don't. Regina was not here when he first arrived a little before Christmas. This has nothing to do with Regina. No, I, I thought not. The idea that you and Regina might be in love is something so... Well, it's so... Uh... Perhaps we should stop this conversation. No, don't stop. Then I can only suppose you mean Angelina. Yes. Do you mean Angelina's in love with Eric? I McClure? mean, I'm in love with Angelina. Yeah, I'm really And I have the honor of asking you for her hand. Yeah. Jan, what is the use of making up such a story? You're not in love with Regina or Angelina. Jan, you won't save yourself by marrying my daughter. Shall I tell you who you are in love with? He replies in permission. I, I, I can't have guessed wrong. No one escapes his fate, yeah. No one escapes that fate. And you refuse me Angelina's hand? Yes, for the sake of your happiness as, as well as hers. You'll never see me again, Edward Broderick. I know. You'll be leaving at dawn tomorrow. I shall hear you go, Jan. But I won't say goodbye. country may be changed. I like the country as it was. Yeah, you see, you talk of it in the past. Things were not gone as they were. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, good night, Edward. Oh, I I'll see you take care. Oh, uh, Jeremy, what's the talk in the kitchen quarters? Talk, Mrs. About the war. We've heard nothing, missus. No mention of you slaves trying to run away. Oh, no, missus. Why for should we do a thing like that? Well, mind you, don't. My, my sister begs to be excused, Eric, but she, she's feeling the strain, rather. Uh, yes, of course, and I, too, must go soon. Oh, there's, there's no hurry. If you forgive me, I'm glad that I will retire. As, as you wish, Regina. Good night, Mr. McClure. Good night, Miss Regina. I've been happy to make your acquaintance. Are you coming, Angelina? In a while, Regina. Good night, then. Regina.
that? It's me. What about my story? Your story? You, you don't bear any grudge for what happened this afternoon, Jimmy? Of course not. But you heard an awful lot, you know. You were very brave not crying out. Neither did I when I was your age. I made it a point of honor never to let a sound pass my lips. Let's go and sit down, Jimmy. Sit down? Oh, I should think not, thank you. Why don't you speak? I was thinking. Are we going riding tomorrow? No, not tomorrow, Jimmy. I have to leave the plantation earlier. When are you coming back? I don't know. Listen, Jimmy. It's possible that there may be a war. And we don't know what can happen to any of us. What could happen to me? I have no fears for you. To me, it's a different matter. I'm a soldier. So we say goodbye without any fuss. Goodbye? Yes, but first I want to ask you something, Jimmy. What? Supposing somebody said to you... Now, I'm, ju I'm just supposing this. Supposing somebody said that I was in love with your sister. What would you say to that? You? In love with Angelina? Yes, if someone said that to you. I'd find it funny. Lovers look so silly. But you're not going forever. I'm going to tell you a secret, Jimmy. It's my secret. I want you to promise to keep it all your life. Yes, I promise. This night is not like other nights. I've never spoken to anyone like this before. I want you to remember it. You know, Jimmy, odd times, freedom of will is a crushing weight. And it's not always possible to choose. I'm in love, Jimmy, as no human being was ever in love before. And of course every man says that and they're right. But I cannot go on living any longer. You can't go on living? Why? Because the person I love cannot love me. How do you know? How do I know? That's a very intelligent question. I just know that's all. A single glance was enough to foresee years of useless suffering. Then don't see the person. It's not so easy, Jimmy. What are you going to do? Strangest thing I've ever done in my whole life. I'm going to hurl myself against fate as you hurl yourself against a stone wall. I don't understand. Sorry, Jimmy, I was thinking out loud. It's better not to know what men are thinking. It's almost always sad or shameful. I'm not ashamed. But I'm alone. Hopelessly alone. How can you be alone? While I'm here. You're so funny tonight. I'm sorry, I shouldn't be spoken. So you're in love with Angelina. Why don't you marry her? All you've understood of our conversation is that I'm in love with Angelina. Isn't that what you meant? Angelina? Who knows? She might have been my salvation. You haven't told me a story yet. Tell me a story about your country. All right. A story about my country. Let's see. Very well. In Poland, around about 1720, there lived a boy called Jan. Like you? Yes. He was my great-grandfather's brother. Then it's a true story. Absolutely true. He was in love to the verge of madness. And one day when he saw the person he loved, wouldn't even look at him. He fell into a frenzy and killed his love. Why? Perhaps because he thought he'd stop being in love and suffering at the same time. Shouldn't have killed that person who'd done nothing to him. He couldn't help it, Jimmy. There are times when men commit the most terrible crimes without being able to help it. But then something happened which he hadn't foreseen. What? 
He went on being in love with the person he had killed for years and years. And then one day, this is what happened. God took Jan in his great hand and very gently broke him to pieces. What does that mean? Very gently broke him to pieces? Well, life will show you how God goes about it to break a man to pieces. Sometimes it takes 20, 30 years. A whole life. But he does what he wishes. And time is his own. I don't understand. Now, come on, Jimmy. You're going upstairs and you're going to bed. Is that promise? Yes, Lieutenant Pashevsky. First, give me your hand and say goodbye to Lieutenant Vyshevsky. Goodbye, Lieutenant Vyshevsky. Goodbye, Jimmy. Don't you see how awful it is? I'm really in love with Eric McClure. But what's so awful about that? He wrote you a love letter, didn't he? Oh, the love letter. Well, to begin with, he never wrote me at all. But what about the story you told me? It was a lie. No, it wasn't. I really believed it myself. But what you told me wasn't true. Oh, you don't understand. Oh, I'm so unhappy, Regina. Perhaps he'll come visiting again. But I don't know what to do. He doesn't so much as look at me. Then don't look at him either. But he's going away tomorrow. And he was so handsome. If only he'd go walking with me down the Great Avenue. I'd kiss him. Yes, I'd kiss him. I didn't tell you. Lieutenant Vichesky proposed to me after supper, but I didn't think he was sincere, and I told him so to his face. Oh, what's the matter? Oh, Regina, forgive me. It's neither with you nor with me that he's in love, Angelina. You're not going to tell me he's in love with Miss Prelo. Don't be ridiculous. Well, who then? Who is he in love with? Hasn't it occurred to you that Lieutenant Bischewski might not fight in either army? Are you telling me he deserved? Well, if war did break out tonight, he could easily put on civilian clothes and remain quietly on this plantation. I like what you're saying, McClure. If you ask my opinion, I gave it. Of course, of course. I, I, I had no right to ask you that question. I don't know. Everything I hear, everything I see fills me with anxiety. Something dreadful is going to happen. I, I'm, I'm convinced of it. He's probably gone to his room to think over his problem. Come in. Miss Regina, we're alone once more, for the last time. And Knights, I have something to say to you. I've come to beg your pardon. Do you hear? I don't want to go away without begging your pardon. Time is passing, Regina. For the last few hours, I've not been the same person. I'm suffering just as you are. There is that link between us. Will you ever forgive me? Just say yes in a whisper and I'll be at peace. I'll go away at peace with myself. I need only stretch out my hand to touch you. Will you allow me to, Regina? As for yourself, have you decided what you do, McClure, if war should come? Well, I'm a southerner. What choice do I have? Pardon me, Master Edward. Yes, Jeremy, what is it? Some of your men just came up from their quarters, sir. They seem mighty worried. They'd like to have a word with you, sir. Well, where are they? In the kitchen, Master Edward. I'll come at once, sir. Excuse me, of course, certainly.
thought you'd gone to your room. I wish to speak to you, Eric and Carol. Here? Just as you like. What I have to say will no doubt surprise you, and I know that I'll never be able to express my feelings. Why not? Another time, perhaps, but not tonight. Everything conspires to seal my lips. The very air I breathe seems to stifle me. If I'm not mistaken, you have a great deal on your mind. I know that I'll be brought to confide in you. Oh, I thought that was your wish. No, I am compelled to. What compels you? You. You alone. The very way you're looking at me. I don't know what you think of me, Lieutenant Bashevsky, but I'm a plain man and I'm used to plain speaking. If I didn't think you were disturbed, I would have already left this room, for nothing you have said so far has made any sense to me. I have the impression that all the words you use are simply to hide what you're afraid of saying. If you were to speak more plainly, perhaps I could help you. Help me? Yes, help you with the problem you have so much to hide. Well, I have no wish to force a secret from you. I have a fear of confidences and the familiarity they bring with them. But I'd be blind if I didn't realize you were a very unhappy man. Do you hesitate because you're a foreigner? I'm glad to hear it. After all, you and I are made of the same flesh. I have the same impulses as you, the same perplexities. And sometimes my heart is like the kingdom divided, spoken of in the gospel. Forgive me for saying this, but your austerity chills me. You are one of the righteous, we are told of, who are never wrong. You see, I myself had been wrong all my life. Does it seem strange that I should talk to you like this? Yes, it seems very strange. Lieutenant Bashevsky, what errors you may have committed are not my business. Come out in the open and say what's on your mind. You may be sure I know what it is. You know? Well, yes, your conscience is troubled because you feel won over to the Southern cause. No, that has nothing to do with it. Well, then what have you been talking about for the last five minutes? Well, answer me. I can say nothing to you. We're a thousand miles apart. This controversy between the North and South means nothing to me. This war is not my war. Something else is breaking my heart. Something that you can't understand. And what I read in your face is the invincible ignorance of the pure in heart where the suffering of the world is concerned. You have never loved Eric McLeod. Your pride has never yielded. You don't know as I know that a soul can be in bondage to another soul. And the power of life and death yielded by a human face. If you are not, how do you know I'm not? You? Lieutenant Vyshevsky, wait apart in a little while. I'm going to enlist in the Southern Army and you'll go where you please, but I'm sure I'll never see you again. Because of that and because of what you've just told me, I'm going to speak to you openly. I know I shall be killed. I too shall be killed. I want to be killed. You've judged me cold and hard and a truly righteous man, according to your view. Well, I don't know if I am one of the righteous, but I'm certain of one thing. Never have I suffered so bitterly as in this house. In this house. Because there's someone here I'm in love with. He doesn't know it. Why haven't you told this person? It's too late. It's too late for love. War is on the threshold and I must go. <laughs> Why can't I die with those words in my ears? At least I lean this with earth with a doubt instead of this unbearable truth. Are you afraid we're in love with the same person? It is not possible. I don't see why. A word would be enough to open your eyes. I can easily imagine you to be in love. Love isn't a sin. Love isn't a sin. It seems to surprise you. It looks as if you're even more of a Puritan than I am. I want to ask you something. You say this person you're in love with is unaware of it. 
Haven't you ever been tempted to express what you feel? Of course, but I told you why I didn't. Wasn't it because you were afraid? That, that your courage failed you? That you trembled for the first time, perhaps? Trembled before a human being? No, you're mistaken. I didn't wish to inflict unnecessary suffering to cause unhappiness, perhaps. Can you imagine a man standing before his love and not being able to say, I love you? Oh, yes. One can be brave and yet like that kind of courage. Even if it kills you? Even if it kills you. Lieutenant Vyshevsky, I feel a sympathy with you that I can scarcely explain. I remember when I was still at school, I was seized with a sudden affection for a classmate of mine. A boy I hadn't spoken 20 words to all term. We became inseparable. We were both deeply religious and we exchanged prayer books. It all seems a little ridiculous now, but somehow you remind me of him. I think that under more favorable circumstances, you and I might have become great friends and remained friends for many years. Don't you think so? Why don't you say something? Perhaps you find me indiscreet. I can assure you I'm not in the habit of offering my friendship at random. Please believe me. I appreciate it. There's something wrong. You look dreadfully pale. No, nothing is wrong. It seems to me that you're helping me to bear my unhappiness. Maybe you're right. Maybe I'm like you and afraid of my love. And upstairs, Angelina knows nothing of how I feel. You know, one day I got in my horse and I rode to the outskirts of this plantation, but, but something prevented me from coming any further, like there was a ban on this house. Why did you come back tonight? Oh, I was too unhappy. I had to see her again. And having seen her once more, once more, you're running away. I believe it my duty to run away from her. What a reasonable love is yours. How curiously restrained. So easily managed. Led here. Forbidden to stray there. What right are you to question my sincerity? I have a right because I have an experience of love that you lack. You're deluding yourself with the foolish sedateness of a boy. If you were really in love with that little girl, you'd be sitting beside her now, good as gold, and breathing sighs until the dear angel asked you herself, why were you so sad? Out of your mind. What are you doing here? Alone with me? Talking of love? Look at yourself. It's you who are enclosed in a van, in a circle of horror. It surrounds your head, your shoulders, your hands. Look at that blood. Innocent of all desire. Those lips. No lips have ever touched. Because you're afraid. If you want to fight, we can go outside, but you're mad to quarrel with me. I wish you no harm. I wish to pick a quarrel with you, you fool. I want to kill you! What is it? What are you doing? What am I doing? I'm insulting this man in your presence. I am calling him a coward. Isn't that enough? Wait! Wait! If you must fight, wait and fight tomorrow. I can't wait. Neither can I. I can no more wait than a lover running to a rendezvous. What has he done to you, yeah? That is my business. Did you insult him? Certainly not. What's going on? You're going to be heard all over the house. Leave us, leave us. No, I want to know. You can't fight without seconds. That's whom you please, but we'll fight tonight. Jan, Jan, I beseech you to pause and reflect. Jan, you're committing a crime. I'm perfectly capable of defending myself, sir, if you won't refuse me the honor of serving as my second. We need another one. Let Mr. White be fetched. Jan. Do as I tell you. A duel. And Evan, what's all the noise? A duel by ladder, like my dear. Who's fighting? Eric McClure and the lieutenant. 
Those two handsome young men in their shirt sleeves. Quite in the southern tradition. I tell you, I've heard voices. We love them. And I tell you, the quality don't raise their voices. Look how Mr. Broderick spoke to those niggas who wanted to run away, a real soft and gentle. He was. Liza, take some punch bowl, quickly now. At this time of night. Don't ask no questions, just do as you're told. And Jeremy, go fetch two large white handkerchiefs from Master Edward's room. Two what? To bind their wounds with, you fool. There's going to be a door. Of course, Mrs. And when you make that punch, bring it to the big room. Yes, Mrs. Also, my fight. Yes, Mrs. Jewel, there's breathing for you. Yes, a duel. But why? What did they quarrel about? It must be about the war. What else could two men quarrel about? I must go to bed, Angelina. No, I'm going downstairs. Oh, Regina, suppose it. I mean, if anything should happen to Eric McClure. Southern tradition, how utterly absurd. I expect their honor's at stake. Perhaps they won't harm each other. Well, will you speak or do you want me to tear one of your ears off? I'll be running. What's that old nigger want now? He told me master must be warned. And what would I warn master about? He said the Lord's going to pass in our midst, and he's going to strike you, the master's plantation. And if you don't say your prayers, you're lost. Well, you little nigger, you go straight back to your cabin, and you tell your grandpa he's been having visions now. Go on, get. Stop crying, child. I can't help. Those two boys will just give each other a few scratches with their swords. Then there'll be a grand reconciliation over the punch bowl. Well, it's been 18 years since the duel was fought here. But they may get hurt. Oh, nonsense. It's just in keeping with the uh, tradition. Ah, uh -huh. I can see a ladder being carried along the Great Avenue. They're going to fight in the glade. Oh, run to Regina to come down here. I want the whole house to join in the festivities. Go, child. Oh. Luke and Barnabas are down there holding the lunch. You just hold that punch bowl and come with me. Regina, Aunt Evelyn says... Oh. You see Miss Regina and Liza? Yes, Miss, I saw her run down the Great Avenue. Well, let her go. She's going away tomorrow anyway. What you doing, child? I can almost see them. You ready, McClure? Yeah? When I was little, I used to be told, say your prayers in secret and the Lord will reward you openly. But when I say my prayers, I feel like I'm talking to myself. Be like to believe as crazy old Uncle John does. He talks to the Lord like he was a human being, asking him for this and that. Sometimes he gets what he asks for. Strange. I ask, but I'm almost sure nobody's listening. If I was to ask for those two boys to come back now as quickly as possible, that's the most reasonable prayer. Yet I'm afraid to make it. Probably because if anything does happen in the day, I'd have proof that I hadn't been hurt and there was no one. When I was little, I believed there was someone. If only there was someone. Why don't they come back? Go to Wimmington for a clergyman and a doctor and bring them back with you. May God forgive you both. I wanted to die. You told me so. You killed him. You didn't even try to ward off my last blow. You killed him. 
Didn't he himself put the sword in the hand that struck him down? He may be the instrument of a will stronger than ours. Oh, don't bring God into a murder. Don't make him your accomplice. Does God demand the disfigured body of a boy? If God were here, he'd weep with shame before the frustration of his word. I understand your grief only too well to sympathize with her. You understand nothing. Then I will go. In a few hours, I will have enlisted with General Beauregard. Do as you please. Regina, go back to the house. I want to stay with him for a moment alone. He's dead, Regina. Life isn't cut off at one blow. The soul doesn't leave the body suddenly. I believe that he's still here. And that he will hear me. Did you love him so deeply? Yes. Even though I knew, I knew everything. If as I believe you are still here, listen to me, I, I won't disturb you with my tears. See how gently I'm speaking. A while ago, when you came close to me, asked my pardon. I didn't say a word, but my heart was bursting. Do you understand, Yah? God will wipe away all tears. He said so himself. He will wipe away your tears and mine. 